chat start okay so hello everyone um today we will start with the vector transformations last time we were reading the plug function and the chuck function and those other options related to that attribute getter and these other options so today in the tidyverse cohort we will start with the other vector transformations under the per package so in the vector transformation i will start with the accumulate and accumulate two these two basically are used to apply some function on on a list or a vector and then it will accumulate the elements uh, it or or we can say it would combine the elements and after performing some operation on that so in the accumulate and then accumulate tool the basic difference is the number of arguments required uh, in accumulate two we have uh, two list or two vectors where the function can be applied but in, in the simple accumulate um, we have only one list or one vector and then the function is applied on the input vector so it accepts a list or a atomic vector as an input and then some argument and there are some also some other arguments like dot init and dot dir and these things i will go through them one by one with examples so let's start with accumulate um in the accumulate i here i apply the addition function on that and dot dir actually which i was saying before is used to specify in which direction the function should be applied so for uh, here i say dot dir equal to backward it will apply this accumulation uh, uh, per function on this vector from one to five and dot dir equal to backward means starting from five uh, the operation starting from uh, five yeeah the operation will be applied in the backward direction so from five it will add because of this uh operation five plus four nine then the three then two and then one so if i say set that to be forward it will be um in the opposite direction of that so dot dir actually specifies the direction in which the direction of accum accumulation is applied um and we can also uh, there is some other function uh, some other argument dot simplify which is actually handle the default values uh, which means that for example in here the letters from a to a b c d e till e it will show us that uh, here the operation can be applied or with the help of dot true it will simplify the output so it basically handles the uh, dot default value uh in in the accumulate function and dot init actually specifies from where the operation should start as i was saying before the dot dir is equal to backward will apply in the backward direction and here i apply it in the forward direction and dot init means that operation should start from the digit nine in this one uh in the in our vector or we can say from some element in here we can put some element name in here so applying the addition function op addition operation on the uh, on a vector starting from nine it will add in the forward direction nine plus one and then plus two plus three plus four and so on so we can change the direction of application and we can specify from where the operation should start yeah. the accumulate function should apply in that in the accumulate two i i, I I have told before that it accepts two arguments uh, um, uh, such that i made a custom function paste two in which the arguments is these two arguments are acc and nxt are two arguments and the separator is basically this uh, needed in the paste function the base paste function paste function so in the letters one to four i say that you should paste dash and dot in between the letters it applied uh recursively there is an argument uh there is something mentioned here maybe i forgot anyways it it applies the arguments acc and nxt which are actually this one 
one and this one and we will combine all the letters uh, basis, on the basis of that the separator here is this uh, this one dot this dot here is the separator so that's why we have got this separator in between the letters so the main difference is actually the number of arguments which are allowed in the accumulate and accumulate to uh, because of this uh, dot dir argument there was a previous function named accumulate write and they said that it is deprecated in the favor of dot dir argument in the accumulate okay so moving on in the list c we have another uh, function under the vector transformation the list c which actually combines the elements into a vector and it can concatenate them together so for example in our list this one uh, with three named uh, elements i can combine all of them one by one and the output will be in the form of a vector um, and they say that there is something in in this vector transformation i have noticed maybe it is some other per functions as well that this one is left empty dot three dots which yet they say that it is left empty for future extensions um again i can apply this list c on some list of data frames as well and because of that for this list which has two data frames uh, with the uh, column names x and y it will combine the data frames in the form of uh, uh, in the form of uh, in this form actually i, I should say uh, and it will give us the output uh, in the in the row bind vector which actually specifies that the next argument in the vector transformation list r bind which actually gives the output in the form of a rows uh, when we com uh, want to combine the lists so for example again for the same uh, list with two data frames i want to bind the data frames together by rows so that's why i use the list r bind and it is specified in the definition of the list r bind as well that it will act on the into uh, combines the elements into a data frame by row binding them so for our this list with two data frames if i apply the list r bind it will bind them by rows just like this one but there is one there are some additional arguments which are allowed in this one which is one of them is names two which is used to specify what will be the output uh, data frame name in our um, uh, in our output from the list R bind. So this A comes from actually this one. This A is that one. And I said that the names to equal to ID, which is actually the name of this column in the output of the list R bind. So this is the output one and two output this one is this one one and two and the second y column is left with na values i did find if we can handle this na values in the examples of this list r bind but this is actually the output for the list r bind a comes under the id column which we specified from the names two and then b data frame which is this one which has values under the y column as three and four and the names are names of data frame come here so if we want to bind the data frames together row wise we can use the list turbine and then there is alternate of that that we can combine the data frames column wise um but they it has some other arguments as well one of them is name repair uh, Name repair actually deals with the names of the data frames which we want to uh, specify, or we can actually normalize the names of the data frames. So, for example, by normalization, I will explain it later. For example, in here, the we use the list C bind. Uh, it will combine these data frames column wise, and because of that, we have no any and values here x element from the a data frame is given as one and two and y as three and four so we, we do not have this option of putting the names of the data frames in here 
this names repair actually which i have used in here as universal um, this actually comes from this vectors package and it specifies that the if we can use the it specifies three different arguments under this repair or name repair we can say universe name repair equal to unique or name repair equal to universal or some other arguments if i want to show that maybe um so for example they say that Vector as a names, yeah, this one. Oh, sorry. So it says that it has different options, which are actually the same argument for the name C bind as well. That under this repair option, this this one, we have all of these options to put in, which will which has different functionality. For example, for Repair is equal to minimal. Uh, yeah, minimal. Uh, and they say that the names is are names are actually uh, repaired to minimum names, which are never null or any. And then unique. If we use unique names, the names will be repaired to unique values, which are different from the other column names. And then universal names are actually quite. Uh, synthetic form one of them is actually used in my example um so for example in here there is some a vector with two elements which has some uh some underscore for example in here underscore f double o or plus which is a vector with the names of the data frame if if you want to say it and then i say that that i should apply it i should but repair this with the help of this universal argument and it will repair this underscore f4 to dot f4 which will be actually a unique name that's why in the list c bind they say that universal will make it unique uh, such that it will be different from all of the other names of the column names uh, from the other column names so this underscore dot uh, underscore double uh, underscore f double o becomes dot underscore def, def, f o and then plus one plus becomes dot so it's it's up to you if you want to apply uh if you want to apply which one uh option you want to apply on the name repair in the list c bind all of these options are actually coming from this vectors package and they say that if you want to read more you should go to this option in the vectors package um okay and then comes the list flatten this actually flattens and removes all of the uh, internal hierarchy in, in some list for example uh, so in the in the previous in our previous lecture we observed that in one list we have some other list as well that's because of that the depth of the list increases which which we read before under the pluck depth which specifies what is the depth of the list or we can say how many lists are in one uh, list within list or within list that, that that is specified with the help of plug depth. So this flatten list flatten actually flats all of that um, uh, in, inside hierarchy in, in one list and it will show us that the simplified form of the major, uh, the principal list. So for example, in here, I have this uh, in this one list, this is, list number one then within that we have one more list and within this list list we have another list so this one actually shows the structure of that list this example list and when i apply the list flatten it will flatten that x list and it will remove inside uh, it will remove the hierarchy inside our x list and because of that this one is shown as simply as uh, number one and then this list of two is removed the inter inside hierarchy is removed and it will show it will be shown as a simple uh, elements inside that list so if if we, we want to simplify the 
list within list and within list we can use this list flatten argument this uh, list flatten function and this list flatten function has some other options as well for example this name spec and name repair which is again coming from this factors as name uh, uh, package so one of them i have used uh, in one example for this name spec because it has two other, two options as outer or inner uh, which actually specifies if we want to flatten the list from the outside or from the inside from the outside means that we can say this name of this list is the outside or the first element in in the major list so it will flatten on the basis of this principal first element or the outside element and if we if we say that you should flatten it from the inside with the help of name spec and we specify that it should be inner it specifies in the opposite direction and i will uh, let's see that for example um we flatten the x list we say that the name spec should be inner and then show us the names of that list so when we when i say name spec is equal to inner it will get these elements which are inside the m and n list so it will go inside the list and it will flatten it on the basis of the inside elements inside the names of the uh, names of the inside elements and if i say the it should you should flatten it uh, on the basis of the outside outer uh, argument it should flatten from the uh, this outside element m and n um, one one thing I was mentioned mentioning before that because of the list flattening, uh, the depth of the list is decreased. So, for example, if I use I uh, want to show the actual depth uh, with the help of this plug depth function, uh, it has a depth of four. But when I have flattened it, the depth has decreased to three. So it can be handy sometimes when we want to show. Uh, the simplification of a list when we have many lists inside the list or we can um, uh, show the names of the list which are uh, inside the uh, inside the principal list yeah actually uh, you can look um, vectors package uh, uh, i didn't know it most of like most of the arguments in the vector package but uh, i'm also like um, equal to you i should also look into that as well um okay and then comes the list assign um uh, which was i was saying to the jack that you will be more confused when we, when you will see the list assign than the list modify because in our previous uh, uh previous uh, meeting we were uh confused about the modify in then the assign in so and then comes here in the vector transformation the list assign and the list uh, modify and then there is another one as well list merge so list assign is actually used uh, just uh, equal to or i can say um, the same functionality as the uh, assign in such that it, it will assign the elements inside our specified list and we will actually modify or replace our existing elements inside the list so for example the for this x list it has m and n as the same as before this is the structure of that list and when i say that i want to assign in this x list one more element o is equal to one it will assign with the help of this assign function o is equal to one in my this x list and if i want to replace this m list i can replace it with the help of list assign and i can say that the existing m should become one and because of that this m comes in here and old m this one is completely replaced with m is equal to one so it will but uh, one thing i have noticed in here that list assign actually didn't modified or uh, I should should not use the modified word because the list modifies coming. I can say it it doesn't actually 
delete the previous elements. Assign in was actually uh, all deleting all of the previous elements in the uh, in the list in our X list, for example. But this list assign is actually only replaces the elements, or it it can actually assign the value or, or to some existing elements. And in the documentation, they say that you can use the zap function to actually delete one of the elements in your list. And when I use that, because of that, this M element is actually completely removed and only N is remaining in our list. Okay, and then comes the list modify. List modify and list merge are actually quite, uh, they uh, comment each other, I can say, that they recursively combine two lists. Uh, such as the list modify actually modifies the existing elements by name or by position and then list merge actually merges some new elements but inside our existing list but it doesn't remove or completely remove the all of the elements from the existing list uh, maybe i'm confusing you so i should show it with example for example this for this again the same x list I can say that I want to modify this X list such that one new element Z is added to X list. And because of that, uh, uh, yeah. So this B is equal to two remains intact after modifying, but A has become from one to five which was actually one when I said that in the Z list, A should be one to five. So from A is equal to one, A becomes one to five, but B remains intact because I haven't specified in my new argument or new code that the B should be this value. So list modify can be actually quite handy when we want to apply some function recursively on our existing elements. List merge, idea of the list merge is quite uh, quite similar to list modify, but uh, they say that the it merges the elements of a list recursively and um, uh, or it, it can do that with the help of a name or by position as well. I, I haven't shown any pos any example with the help of position and I don't think they have an example in the documentation as well which changes the elements on the basis of the position by position I mean for example the Z uh, Z there is some element new list Z uh, it should be added at the position two or position three so I haven't found it in the documentation maybe I should try it uh, anyways so list merge actually is doing the same thing but it is modifying this existing list, adding this A element into the X list and the B remains intact. So uh, maybe we should read the documentation related to that because list modify and list merge are actually quite similar if we want to read the so, documentation. So Shah, for the... Um, uh... So for, for, for a sign, you could assign, I guess, to either an element that exists or doesn't exist. Um, and then if you assign to an element that exists, it replaces like the whole the whole element. Yeah. List modify kind of, like, if I could put it this way, surgically changes a specific position in the list structure. Um, yeah. And then, then list merge, um, I guess is like list modify, except that maybe it might take as an argument a, a list. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to differentiate my mind, modify and merge here. Like yeah, like you why, like yeah. you know, I'm starting to see considerable overlap. Yeah. So there should be some differentiation between the merging and the modifying. They say here that it merges the elements of the list recursively and this one actually modifies. And list assign does the operation on the basis of the name or position. So for example, let's see the list assign examples. For this list, again, I was using the same list. 
when they are updating values on the basis of list assign they are modifying it on the basis of the name so this a becomes one or this z becomes five and in list modify they are replacing and leaving the other elements of the z alone which i was showing before that the a has become one to five but the b remains only two b remains intact and again i can remove the values with the help of z function okay and then i'm trying to understand this list merge how it is different than list modify mm. so when i when we are using list modify x is x becomes equal to one one to ten equals becomes to yeah x becomes equal to eleven instead of one to ten and then a becomes two to five or c becomes two to three so, so shy i wonder if for list modify i mean i'd have to test it but like let, let's just like the name somehow, or sorry, list, list merge rather, like the name seems to suggest that maybe you could provide a list just by name, just naming the list. Whereas modify, it seems like you need to provide in the dots sort of the, the coordinates that you want to modify. But maybe with merge, you can just provide two lists and then per stitches them together recursively. Does, mm -hmm. does that make sense? But I mean, yeah, in their in their sense. examples, the form that they have is that they're at least so far as I'm seeing in the documentation, they're they're specifying the list in the same way mm -hmm. that they do in list modify. I don't know. I feel like I'd have to work through some examples here. It, you're right. The documentation is kind of con is confusing here. Only only thing which we can make sense is actually this this simply three lines. That list assign uses name or the position. Let's modify modifies recursively and list merge merges the elements. But they haven't modified. Uh, they haven't shown that how this merging is done. Like we need a list or what? What? what how it is modifying the actual list? So, and then they have some other uh, options as well, or from the assign in and the modify in. So, anyways. Uh, Maybe we will discuss it more or I, I, I can search more examples and then I can present next time because I'm presenting also next time. Um, okay. Okay, and then comes the list simplify, which actually simplifies the list, but there is a condition that the length of the list should be one or it should have some compatible data type. By compatible data type, I mean that if we are simplifying the numeric with the string data, it will give it will throw an error. You can only simplify the list when we when we have the identical data types or it has length equal to one. So for example, for this list, the length is not one because of that we get an error that the it should have size one. The idea is actually just to output the list in the in the form of a simple uh, 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 I can say the uh, simple vector form or show the output in the form of a uh, uh, ignoring the hierarchy inside the list and showing the output so and again I was saying that the it, it, it says that data should be the data type should be compatible and when the data type is not out, matching it will throw an error that i can't combine the double and the character data type uh, there is one argument in the list simplify which says strict and when we put it equal to false it will show us all of the list without any operation without any application of operation on it uh, so when i said list is equal to false it, it did not give me any error like that, that I can't combine something. It will show the actual list. Because of that, one, two, and X is like just simply shown in here that th these are the elements of the list. And it, it can be handy sometimes 
if we want to show the output of the existing code and we can we do not want to perform any operation inside our inside our code and when i say that the strict is equal to true it should apply the operation it should apply the operation and i didn't show the output in here it for this one it will again throw an error this one it will again throw that error that that's when the strict is equal to true it will apply the operation okay and i was saying that the one of the condition for the list simplify that it should have a length is equal to one when we have a list which has length is equal to one it is simplified as that it is simplified and shown in the form of a vector so the main idea is actually just to show the simplification for one of the uh, for our list list transpose actually um this transpose actually uh, turns the list inside out. When I was saying before that uh, list flatten, flats the list and it removes the inside depth or uh, the empty list. The transpose is quite similar to that, but it will show the output such that the inside elements are transposed outside and the outside becomes inside. And so uh, it will be easy to understand from the example. So, for example, uh, this X list, which has this structure, two lists inside M and N, again, the same list which I've uh, used before. When I transpose that and show the structure of that list, this M has become gone inside and the A and the B has gone outside as the main names of the list. So, it transposes the element inside out, which is actually the same main definition of this list transpose. And then there are some additional arguments inside, inside which I, I, I wasn't able to understand. And maybe we, we can have a look at that. Uh, some templates, there are some additional arguments um, related to list transpose that we can apply some template on it and on the basis of the template the operation can be applied so for example in this list transpose we have this template is equal to one null it says that a template that describes the output list can either be a vector character vector where elements are extracted by name or an integer where elements are extracted by position defaults to the names of the first element of x or if they are not present the integer indices so that describes the output list so the from the list transpose the output output will also be a list and this template option describes how the output is how the output is different from the inside list so let's look at one of the examples where they have used template is equal to this one so for example for this list, we have inside these two list X, which has two elements in the LL list. And when I say that the transpose should be X, Y, Z, uh, template should be X, Y, Z. Um, let's run that, I guess, to be better. Um, and when I say that, that template should be x y z for this list all oh, this is different than our lists um um so when i said that that this template should be followed for the output the main idea of that um the x has one and two yeah so this one and two are transposed out from the list y has become one which is simply exi uh, existing in two of the list uh, only once um then z is two and this z has become null 
So anyone is able to understand how this template option is applied? I wasn't able to understand like fully. Or we can try this one, template is equal to one. How this is different than that one. One and two. Okay, so when I said template is equal to one, I'm specifying that the output should be only the first elements from our list. And that's why I'm getting a one and do only, and the rest of it is ignored. So something is going on here. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, so there, there, there are some other, I mean, the options in here as well. And maybe I I missed here, like, in, or it is coming up. I should mention it at the end that in one of the uh, one of the operations in the in one of the functions, I forgot which one. It it says that you can control the output for like for how much time the if the list is lists are too long, you can control that for how much time the operation should be run. Uh, after ending all of that, I will come back to it. That which which function is that? Okay, and, and uh, after the list transpose, we have this reduce and reduce to, which are actually used just to combine the elements of a vector and not showing all of the functionality and all of the indexes and just showing the output. So reduce to actually uh, reduce and reduce to are different in that case that the reduce to accepts. Um, a second vector for the operation as well. Uh, but in deduce, we have on uh, option of application on only one of the vectors. Um, so for example, when I say that from one to three, reduce the operation, the operation of the addition and show the output, it will show is, as six, which is actually equal to this operation. So it will it reduces all of the indexing and all of the some uh, inside list operation and it will show the single value of the uh, operation in that. In the reduce to actually, we can apply this function paste, for example. And I say that the, uh, as I mentioned before, that reduce to requires two arguments. So these two act as two arguments in our reduce to function and it will apply the paste operation on these two vectors and because of that all of the elements are combined together because of uh, this reduce to function um yeah actually yeah, so main idea is actually that the from the reduce and reduce to we we just want to show the output from our operation and just we do not want to indulge into all of the operations which are going going on underneath. Okay, um, let me find that that we can control the time of, of the operation. I maybe I missed in here. Um, there was some of one of the function in which it said that you can control for how much time the this operation can be done on on the on your uh, on your lists um, which one is that is this the done function uh, i see it mentioned in a reduce in the in the documentation you have seen that yeah, exactly. I, I don't know if it's oh, okay. quite what you're saying. It says here, oh. um, the reduction terminates early if the function yeah. returns a value yeah, wrapped and done. And that's coming from Arlang, it looks like. Yeah, that one, that one. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Actually, after the reduce to, we are done with the these vector transformations. If anybody have any 
questions other than some <laughs> i mean some confusion about the list modify and the list merge maybe i'll look more examples and i will come up some with something next time so okay that's it, I guess. Just one kind of wild question that's maybe a little bit off topic is, uh, do you know yeah. if there exists within Per or elsewhere um, any kind of construct where you can um, sort of like use the logic of reduce, but let's say for like a data frame, like let's say, imagine you have a data frame yeah. You do one modification to the data frame and then you get the updated data frame. Then the next step takes as an input the that prior state and like you could do that. But imagine like you're working through iteration instead of uh instead of a you know uh pipes. I don't, I, that's probably a bit too abstract to be clear. Um mm -hmm. I don't think so. I haven't okay. seen something like that. Uh, so so you were saying last time about something uh, related to this list R bind and list C bind. Ah, is right, it, right. Is, so is it uh, the same as uh, map DFR something? So I think it's, if I could put it this way, spiritually related to that, but maybe a little <laughs> bit, a little bit different because um yeah so the map dfr i guess the previous what was previously known as map dfr it, it seems like it returns a it returns yeah. a data frame um and you could kind of like combine your data frames but i don't know if there's a way if there's a way to kind of iteratively modify your data frame um struggling to describe this exactly um where you're not using where you're not using the st steps in a pipeline exactly um, or, uh, or, or or maybe you are but like you can iterate over the, over that i mean i know there's like there's a cross but that doesn't quite seem to work mm -hmm. i guess um like let's let, let's imagine for example that you have like a data frame of a few columns and like step number one is take uh, the first column and the second column and do some, you know, like divide the first column by the second column or something like that. Then the next step is take the second column and the third column, divide the second column by the third column and so forth, like iterating over all the columns. Let's, let's imagine, right. I'm wondering mm -hmm. how, how you could express that and whether Perl would offer a way of doing something like that. I feel like a cross doesn't quite do it. Or, or maybe I'm just not seeing a way to do it. Mm -hmm. I I remember I had done something like that, but it was different. Like I was uh, I was doing it with the help of this consecutive ID, which is in the deep layer. Maybe you can check that, but. It it okay. performs operation row wise, but your your thing is different. Yeah, mine uh, mine would be like co column column wise. Um, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll, you can I'll, find I'll something. I'll see if I can come the... up with an, like a constructed yeah. example and maybe share it in, in 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 Slack to try try to get the idea across a little bit better. Yeah. Because it it seems like well at least my impression with Per was that you know when you're dealing with data frames, there's like you you can return a set of data frames or you can uh, return like a set of data frames and then get kind of um, combined somehow row wise or column wise um mm -hmm. but which is just like list r bind yeah exactly um but it doesn't seem like there's anything like if i could put it this way the data frame version of a reduce you know I mean, reduce is helpful mm -hmm. in the sense like you're only interested in the final result. Mm -hmm. That's all you want to keep, mm -hmm. but you're you're iterating to get to that final result. You're only keeping the last result, and it works for a single a single value, I guess. And I 
probably you could extrapolate that to a column maybe, but I don't know if there's a way like you can take a data. For, I mean, essentially that's kind of what you're doing with, with, with the pipeline and, 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 and say like in the deep do -do. Yeah. type stuff is like you take a data frame, you perform mm -hmm. some modification and modify, modify, modify. And at each step in the pipeline, implicitly you have a data frame, but at the end, like, you know, if you chain things together, you just get the final result. Like, let's imagine you have a set of steps and you want to iterate, like somehow you, the steps are such that you could, you could iterate, right? Um, you could express it in sort of like a reduced form where you're iterating. I don't know if there's this reduce for data frames. Um, yeah. No. Uh... Maybe I should check documentation. You 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 said something in the reduce, if it is allowing for something for data frames, in the documentation. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. Okay. I I mean maybe I don't know. I guess you could apply it to a list, but I'm wondering. Yeah, I mean it's still going. I guess it's still the return value is still a single value. Is that right? uh yeah yeah the output is actually it it deals with the default values that the output is the single value yeah okay i sh i guess we should uh end the meeting here and i will check if next time